Hi. Mary here, Mary Kina Donlan from Ireland. You're welcome to my series of videos on twin flames, soulmates, divine partnerships, self-love and growth and evolution. Um, I have been on this twin flame path since 2008. Um, actually, the date was the 28th of the 10th, 2008. So the 28th is 2 and 8 is 10. The 10th is October 10. And 2008 is 2 and 8 or 10. So 10, 10, 10. So you may have synchronicities like that uh, with dates on your own journey. But I will say there were many, many times that I let go of the twin flame label because I didn't buy into it for the simple reason that many readers were reading about what's your twin flame doing? Where is he or she at? And they're very entertaining, but it doesn't bring you to the core of the twin flame path and the twin flame growth and the learning and the lessons and the healing that you have to do as a twin flame. Now, there were and are forerunners on the twin flame path. I would count myself one of those, but I'm not sure whether waves first wave, second wave, whether I was a first wave or a second wave, I don't know. But I watch Mel Brand on Gold Ray Twin Flames and he has been a brilliant teacher for me. He does no fluff and bells and whistles with him and that's the way I'm inclined to be as well. I wasn't always like that because I was kind of up in the air a lot and I was sending healing to my twin and trying to teach my twin and many twin flames um, do, I suppose they're more, they're more strongly intertwined on a higher, on the higher planes than I was. Uh, he used to come into my dreams he would give me messages, they'd be puzzles, and some of them would be for him. And I personally would send them on to him. And uh, right or wrong, I don't know, but that's what I did. I have friends on the Twin Flame Path who would not do that in a million years. But I had the six month bubble love phase with my twin and we did a lot of talking, speaking, sharing. Um, intimacy, vulnerability, all of that. And then, of course, it all went belly up. And the bubble love phase came to an end and the hard work started. And for the most part, I've been walking the path on my own. Uh, there's been silence. There's been the odd, you know, the odd. Uh, reply to messages. There has been, after the bubble love phase, we would have met in the physical twice, I think. I made many, many attempts to meet up and fly to his city, meet up once or twice he agreed and spirit took charge. The text got taken out over. He didn't receive texts or I didn't receive texts and miscommunication happened. And really what we should have done was pick up the phone. But I have picked up the phone to make phone calls since and there has been no pick up, no reply. So, you know. It is what it is. The journey is what it is. And it's 
all about self-growth and self-care and empowerment and self-esteem and healing. Now, the Twin Flame template is open to everybody now because the Forerunners have their work done. They've cleared some of the density, like walking through a forest that's, you know, trees fallen and briars and brambles and harsh vegetation. We've cleared all of that, but that doesn't make the path hugely, it changes the energy and it opens up the energy a bit more than it had been opened before we started working bringing a more loving energy to the planet, but we still have work to do and the new waves coming in have work to do. Of course, everybody comes to the planet with a mission and it like some people may have the best relationship ever and be married for 60 or 70 years and that's their mission. Fine, but they're not going through this twin flame separation uh, self-care, independent path, but they're going through some other path. Many of them lose children, children, car crashes, children at birth, um, parents looking after parents for 10 or 15 or 20 years or more. You know, everybody has their learning and path to walk. Nobody gets away without being faced with lessons. We have free will as to whether we're going to learn those lessons or not. Whether we come to enough of this crap, I need to feel better or I'm not walking this path anymore. And please, mother, don't come in. I'm living with my parents at the moment during uh, COVID. Uh, not an easy journey either. I'm 61. I had a lot of family healing done before lockdown. Um, I decided to come and stay with them because things were getting scary. And my sister did the shopping. My brother collected the uh, pension and I stayed here and did whatever heavy work had to be done around here and I didn't go out, but now I'm out and about bit by bit by bit. But by gum, the last two months, I thought I had my family healing done, but I hadn't. More of it, the, the root of codependency um, had to be pulled out. I just hope I'm at the end of it. So I will tell you that many lessons, you will learn many lessons. Patience, your twin, or your divine partner, or even spreading it out now further, many people around you, whoever triggers you, they're your best teachers. And a lot of the time it's twin, but it can be karmic partners, it can be friends, it can be family, it can be workmates, you know, but you will know. And I will tell you that there are many, many layers to each learning. Now, as the generations go on, I know my daughter would have told me that she wouldn't be doing ancestral healing. She has enough of her own work to do. But my, I went deep on the ancestral healing. Now, I have a series of ancestral healing videos like these for purchase through my website if you're interested in that, if that path is calling to you. Um, my website, www.angelicalifeguidance.com, you probably have if you're here. So you will learn forgiveness. I've just written a list here. Compassion, acceptance, gentleness, self-love, self-care. You will learn about codependency and heal it. That's huge. You know this, I need him, I need him in my life. I need her in my life. I want her, I miss her, I long her. I felt the longing. That will eventually go. So just know that's where you are heading towards. And don't beat yourself up if it comes back again and again and again. 
So just look at codependency. Later on, I will be sharing a video with you that I made on the ancestral healing. I read out, I will make it as part of this series so that I won't be making a video again. And in that video, I read out what I wrote in my latest book, Onwards and Upwards, by Mary Kina Donlan, available on Amazon, in paperback and Kindle, about codependency. So I go through it all there because every time I try to explain it, I explain it differently. But I was a person who ticked every box on the codependency learning and codependency they usually teach about um addicts or alcoholics and the family and that would be huge codependency trying to save the alcoholic trying to rescue the alcoholic and worrying about them and being one step ahead of them and trying to take care of them that's all codependency but i had no alcoholic or no addict but I was addicted to this person, you know, basically. And I suppose, truth be known, I was addicted to pain and suffering as well. We don't need to go that route if we can learn quickly and not. I know I had to experience the pain and the emotions and all of that. Mel Brand would say we don't have to experience it, but there was no way around it for me. It just kept happening. It just kept, and I suppose to show how deep we can go and understand other people when they're going through stuff and not be thinking, why can't they let it go? Why are they holding on to that? Why are they making themselves so sad? And why are they suffering so much? There's no need for it. But I've got to be gentle, kind, compassionate and understanding in the work I do as to where the person is. So I had to be there myself, basically. So I mentioned ancestral healing and healing patterns, family patterns. Something that goes on in the family over and over and over again through the generations. And secrets being kept in families as well. And we are not keeping secrets. The truth will come out in this lifetime We've got to be authentic and truthful. And these twin flames, if we have met them already, will teach us that. Uh, because we, we, we come more into our power. As we heal and let go and evolve, we become more into our power. And we start speaking our truth because we're fed up uh, doing the same old, same old. And people pleasing and pussyfooting around people, walking on eggshells in case we say the wrong thing, in case we lose this person, in case they disappear out of our lives. Uh, in my experience, he disappeared out of my life. It didn't matter what I did or what I didn't do. Um, I could have tolerated. We were phoning at one stage and we had four phone calls over us and I woke up the morning after the last phone call, I was on a high on a Monday night, on a high after that phone call. We laughed, we had fun, it was lovely. I woke up on the Tuesday morning, I said, I can't do this anymore. He's not speaking his truth, he's on the surface, he's not being honest with himself, he's not being honest with me, he's enjoying the conversations, but he may have been hearing my stuff, but I wasn't digging deep in those four conversations either. I was keeping it on surface level, but there's only so long you can do that. Like, I mean, me, I go deep, 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 deep. And I won't at this stage tolerate anyone full time in my life that is not open and honest and vulnerable and authentic and speak their truth and be prepared to grow and evolve and learn and be vulnerable with each other and know that there's a path to walk and that we may never be finished, you know? Okay, she's on the phone now and she may be coming up here. So if I knock off, I will start another video. I don't know how to pause this and add it on to the last one. No, sorry, no. 
Um, so that was the patterns and your own patterns. What do you do over and over and over again that gets you to the same place that is not working? that you need to change, or you need to change your perspective and how you're seeing the thing, how you're seeing this relationship, how you're seeing this path, how you're seeing yourself and how you're seeing life. So perspective is another one. Releasing more than you would ever have thought possible to release. I just could not believe the depths that I went to. Now that may not be for everybody either. And if you come into union, earlier than I did, you will be continuing the journey with the person. It's not going to be all roses and, you know, you're going to come up against your healing journey and you will be there to support each other, understand each other, love each other through it all and uh, with compassion, kindness, understanding and working from your soul and your heart. I don't know why some of us have to do it all in separation. I really don't. <sighs> they say if we were in union, the love would blow the planet up and uh, it would be too much for Mother Earth as well or the, ener the collective energy. I don't know. But um, yeah, I've just been in separation for many years. Um, connection... Um, connection to higher self and trust of higher self, trusting your intuition, they will all become stronger and more in tune with your higher self, more spiritual, more being able to see from a soul perspective than 3D. Now, I will say at times when you're learning your lessons, you've got to bring it to 3D as well. If Oh, they're outside. There's work going on outside. A uh, handyman. Um, I will say you've got to look to. Would I tolerate this from a friend? Would I tolerate this from a person with whom I work? You know, because we do. I. I made a lot of mistakes with Twin Flame, but I don't regret anything I ever said or any email I ever sent or any connection I tried to make. But it was a tough learning. If you could come to at sometimes, um, would I tolerate this from anybody else? And you see the fear of losing the person, the fear of making them run away stops us. And then this whole... He's my twin flame and I've got to support and send him love and light as well. Fine, but not a lot. They are well able to walk their own path and codependency would be a big part of that to worry in case they would do something to themselves. Worry in case they would, wouldn't be strong enough to walk the rest of the path. My twin used to be in and out of hospital having operations and the worry and the, please take your vitamin C and please would you see a healer or would you buy crystals? But no, it wasn't his path. He never did anything I asked him to do. It wasn't his path. So what's your path? What's their path? That's huge. And it took me years to get there. I, truth be known, I only got there in the last year, you know, being a detach, detachment, being able to detach. But as I say, it's a process. So don't beat yourself up if you keep falling down and getting up again. Rest, rejuvenate, pat yourself on the back for as far as you've come. Pat yourself on the back for the work you've done, but rest, take time off as well. I went big time into it, healing session after healing session. That was my way, energetic healing and look after your body as well. Um, I would have hit several walls during the journey with my physical body, but spirit thankfully had my back. And I write about some of those in my book, Onwards and Upwards. And I do mention some of it in my ancestral healing series as well. 
But Archangel Michael was there and he always showed me what I needed at the time or brought somebody into my life or inspired me to go for a kinesiology session or whatever. But uh, my adrenals and my immune system had swapped places. They were in the wrong, the energies were in the wrong place. And no, they were up, one was up here and the other was down here. I don't understand it. My kinesiologist told me. And if they swapped places, I was dead. I was in deep trouble. So I just got to her on time and she filled me up with vitamins and minerals and she healed the, whatever layer came up to be healed but I was on five pints of water a day at that stage totally dehydrated and um, um, lacking in vitamin B's and pantotenic acid as well I like I was on she said if you go into the health food shop and they ask you why you're buying so much because it's not normal the amount I'm telling you to go on she said just show them the my prescription so um watch your health through it all another thing if you're older and you're going through the menopause i always knew this i would be on facebook there would be menopause groups and they would be describing everything that i was going through on the twin flame and the healing and the ancestral healing path and the tears and the emotions and the body and the lack of vitamins and all of that and I never attributed it to menopause ever you know and I went there having a spiritual awakening so I bought a book the other day by the medical medium Anthony William gets his guidance through his higher self the doctors the whoever up there and channels it down and in his liver rescue book he spoke about the menopause and he said it's not about age and the menopause and women's bodies it's about much more he says liver health and also me anti-inflammatory um you know watching the food watching foods that inflame your body because i would have suffered from bursitis, tendonitis, and lately um, left side stuff, particularly the female part. And I didn't go into fear, but I changed my diet. I went back to my old diet because I changed it since I came up here and didn't really realize, you know, but um, watch the diet, plenty of veg, anti-inflammatory, um foods um okay we we'll leave that at that fear overcoming fear is huge fear of taking steps fear of feeling the emotions fear of being left alone fear of the safety net being taken from under us fear of what i would didn't go into fear with my female part here i could have years ago i would have but I'm so far along my path now. Anytime I did feel the fear coming in, nope, not my path. I know my path. My path is the natural route and food, emotional healing, energy healing. That's my path. And twin is the complete opposite. Unreal. And I have to accept that. Huge acceptance of that. Accepting other people, accepting twin, accepting family members, where they're at. Their path is different to your path, maybe different to your path. And, you know, you don't have to try and rescue them or teach them or, or control them. Control is huge as well. We have to let go of control, even of controlling our own lives. It's higher self is in charge, soul path. Uh, 24 intimacy into me you can see that's intimacy patience huge huge sometimes along the path nothing will be happening and patience resistance to is huge resisting a move you have to make now there's a difference sometimes 
you have to, there's resistance. I knew that I was resisting a move I had to make at one stage because I didn't feel that I, I, what's the word? I was worthy of what would be given to me if I made this step. And I wanted to find another way. Now, when it came to this, I my friends were saying, would you not go and have your ultrasound? I was thinking of an ultrasound. I knew I wasn't resisting the ultrasound, but I was going through the, well, if he tells me it's malignant, what will I do? I won't, me personally, everybody has their own path. I wouldn't be going to the doctor or the hospital or having a mammogram. That's me. It's me. And I was kind of saying, am I right? Am I wrong? Do I have to experience this? You know, do I really? And no, because I was at the hospital with my shoulder before I needed her, the MRI, but I did not need their treatment. And I worked it out within a week. Once I knew I had a woeful sore shoulder, excruciating in 2012. And it was all grief and pain and emotions and let go, Mary, let go and release and blah, blah, blah. And... I had it fixed within a week after the results of the MRI. Um, so this time I felt it's the same and don't buy into fear, Mary. And I didn't go for the ultrasound. I just started working on diet because I would have gone to my herbalist and I would have gone big into clearing this through diet. Now I know other people's paths. <sighs> They tried that and it didn't work, but everybody's path and everybody's intuition is different and you know what you know and you trust what you trust and don't go my route if it's not deep within you that you absolutely know it's what you have to do for your higher good. So that's another one that you're going to learn through this. What's for my highest good? If this person is advising this, this and this, do I feel that I have to do that for me, for my highest good? Does it feel right? If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Even if you get a reading from me or anybody else, trust your gut because sometimes spirit do test us. Right, okay, we're going to give you conflicting messages here. Which one do you feel is right for you? You know, so don't blame the reader. Uh, you know, it can be a trigger and bring it all back to you. OK, what do I think? What do I feel? What do I know? What me, 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 me? It's all about me. Self-care, self-love, self-esteem, empowerment, getting into your own power, standing your ground. And everybody around you is going to be part of the path. And as long as you come from the perception of this person is here for my highest good, for my soul's evolution and growth. You're doing well. No blame, no criticism of anybody else or twin. Um, because I'll tell you, they're walking their path in the right way for them. And for us as well. You know, if they trigger us, it's about us, not them. And mirrors, they are mirrors for us as well. They will be working through the same stuff as we'll be working through, but in different ways. They'll be coming to the same, oh, oh, this is about my self-esteem. I've got to get more confident. I've got to get more in my power. But they'll be learning it in different ways. Okay. Old belief systems will be leaving as well, like many of us too religions and many are meeting twin flame or divine partner or soulmate it doesn't matter the label anymore um no it doesn't matter the label anymore um different religions different countries different belief systems different family dynamics and there are still people meeting soulmates with whom the family doesn't think it's right and it could be from religion or or country uh oh what do you call it <sighs> traditions so all of this comes into the twin flame path some will resonate with you watching this and more won't 
but I've got to give it all out. Letting your soul lead. You have a soul path. Let it lead. Let it guide you. If you don't know what to do, do nothing and wait. Quiet the mind. Rest. Breathe. Meditate. Go out in nature. Use your crystals, whatever. If you're not clear, don't make any moves. People pleasing out the window as well. Trust you. You will encounter many miracles on this path as well like the connection with your higher self huge fun excitement and uh, joy and excitement connection like there's all of that in it too it's not all about work and healing joy and happiness divine timing is another thing in the divine's time, not ours, like patience, absolutely. I did not think I would not be in physical union 11 years later, but I am in union with me. I've learned so much, but so impatient when another layer would come up to be healed. Detachment, turning off the mind, lots of healing. Knowing when to speak and not to speak. Trust your intuition. Before you make a move, become calm. Does this feel right now? If you're not sure, sometimes then these feelings could come up at night. Will I text? Won't I text? Leave it till the morning. Sometimes, unless there's this huge, not an urgency, but huge love coming from the heart. You know, that kind of an energy. Balance as well. Balance work, rest and play. Balance with light and dark. Balance when to speak and not to speak. Balance. We're working on that too. And balance the energies in your body as well. So I leave the first video at that. And I don't know what my second video will entail. I've covered a lot in that. But I will um, sort something out. Before I go, I will show you the three twin flame pack cards in the packs. I took them out at one stage of my decks. I didn't want to choose them for anyone because I had let go of the label. It was so frustrating. And this twin flame is your divine partner and blah, blah. When it looks like the twin is doing nothing. So I would still say drop the twin flame label, but I do have to keep it because people are still looking for it. And I did say in my book about codependency, when you've learned all you can from codependency, drop the label too. We do need labels to find the teachings. So this is from the Ascended Masters deck and he's Angus and the swan is a huge symbol of twin flames. They mate for life. Now you won't get that, it's the Ascended Masters deck. You probably won't get it unless somebody is selling it secondhand during virtue, she's taken everything off the market. This is the Angel Therapy deck by Doreen Virtue as well, gone off the market. That was the first time I saw those words. I had gone through a lot of the journey up to that. And then this, when I started digging on the internet and I found two girls and I'm still friends with one of them and it explained it all uh, because I had gone through this huge connection, this draw, this pull, this. I remember saying to him, do you not feel this connection? And my language had totally changed from the instant I met him. You know, I could feel it. My heart was going, oh, whole body was in overdrive. So there they are. Archangel Michael, his twin flame is supposed to be faith. The answer to your question involves a spiritually based romantic relationship. So knowing this is a soul path. Every path is a soul path. But when you're consciously on a healing path for every reason, whatever reasons, even if it's not twin flame, it's all for the highest good. And you will be the better of it and your soul will grow. It won't have to do it again. So we're told and we'll be helping the collective energy as well. So now I will definitely leave it at that, 34.22, and I'll talk to you in part two.